So now we're going to start producing the actual output of our application in the views and using templates. And there's a lot to cover here. So up till now, we've been starting to talk about URLs, which are simple. It says when you get the request with the URL of this format, choose a view and send it to that view. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about views.py and templates in an upcoming lecture. We'll talk about forms. And we spent a bunch of time talking about models.py and how the models can talk to Python code, talk to the shell, how the models can inform how we write to the database and how we read from the database. So we're starting to fill parts in. As we put the views together, we're really starting to really create our entire application. And I know it's taken a while to get to the point where we can uh, update the, uh, the get, get to the point where we see the whole thing. So I just wanna say that from time to time, wherever you have DJ for samples, whether it's on your laptop or whether it's on um, Python for, Python anywhere, you you should do a git pull from time to time because I'm always working on these samples and I want you to make sure you have the latest copies of these samples. Sometimes I add little bits, of, I don't change the samples, but I add bits of documentation as I'm like, oh, I should have I should have added that. So views are like the core of the application. I mean, the, the URLs find their way to views. Models tend to serve the needs of views, uh, act as this layer to allow views to work write and read the database. And so the, the views.py has a model aspect and it handles incoming data. When we get to forms and post data, then we copy that into the database. The, the, the views.py decides sometimes whether or not to send the user to a different screen or if it's gonna produce the actual screen, the HTML, it produces that HTML often using template and then sends it back. So the views are where the work really gets done. And what you see is you write a lot of code in the views. You write one line in the URL, few lines in the models file, and then lots of stuff in the views. And I, I consider the templates kind of part of the views as well. So the first thing that Django does when it receives an incoming document, a request for a document, it basically parses that URL. And the, the first thing after the domain name is generally the application. So remember that Django has a project and then underneath that there's one or more applications. In each of the DJ free samples you see lots of applications. Each application kind of to show a little bit of sample code for a topic. And so that second that second part of the URL that is the application name and for all intents and purposes it's also the folder name within the Django project. Now within that usually the next chunk is the view. And so that view within application, <clears throat> the view within application is defined in urls.py. And then after that, there are two kinds of parameters. One is like a key value parameter that comes after a question mark. It also uses ampersands for that. And then sometimes we just put after slashes. This, this is more of a rest style a URL that's very pretty and you put the parameters right on the URL rather than the question mark which is sort of the old school for doing all this stuff. So there is this thing in Django called the URL dispatcher. I sort of call it router on my picture. It's basically to get you to be able to define the URLs and how those URLs are to be parsed and handled and how those URLs to be routed to the various bits of view code. And so we do this in URLs.py. There are three basic patterns. First, you might route a particular URL pattern to a predefined class, and you'll see the example of that coming up. Or there's, there's sort of functions, really old school function that take this, this request, which is, a, which is an object that captures all of the data, the parameters, the URL, whether it was a secure request or not, what host it came from, what's the IP address it came from, all that stuff is wrapped up into this request object, which we'll talk about in a second. And that view function looks at that request object, decides what to do, talks to the database, maybe, and then sends back some a response, whether it's a redirect or some HTML. And the function is kind of the low-level thing, but you can also then define a class. And defining classes, as we'll see, is really quite nice. Um, the classes have methods like for get and for post depending on the kind of incoming HTTP request that we're handling and it also in those uh, methods uh, the request and any other URL parameters can also be sent in. 
So let's take a look at a sample URLs.py from views and we see examples of all three kinds of these routes. Um, URL patterns is a global variable. It's just a list, um, but it has very special meaning. This, this list has very special meaning to Django. And um, you see these path commands, and there's other ways to describe these things. And then you have the path, and the blank path means sort of just slash right after the uh, application name. And then we have which view to send it to. And so this template view as view, this is basically to save you from writing code if all you want to do is take a template out of the templates folder and return it. So you don't have to write your own code in views.py. And so this, it's already there, and that's why we go into Django Views Generic Import Template View, and we're going to say, you know what, I'm going to route, I, I mean, I wrote this, I wrote that template, but I just don't want to write the code to go send that, read, just read that template and send it back. And so this is a predefined bit of Django that does this for us. Sort of the more old school thing is this syntax right here. And basically from dot import views pulls in views slash views dot py. And then this, you will see our functions inside there. And then these are classes also from our views dot py for this particular uh, application. And, and the syntax is a little weird. This is the module we imported. This is the class from that. And then as view is a static method that returns a function that then can respond to uh, the incoming requests. And we'll, we'll see these as we kind of go through these. So up next, we're going to actually look at the views.py and take a look at the, uh, take a look at the views.